everybody and welcome. We say happy Father's Day to the Father of all fathers. Happy Father's Day to all fathers, in rock fathers, all fathers across the land, all fathers in the nation. We say happy Father's Day to you. We thank God for you. We appreciate you, our heroes, and everything that you continue to do for your families. We know that it's not easy. So we just give God glory for you. We say happy Father's Day. And we're going to lift up the name of the Lord today. Yeah. 
going to be with you. His favor will always be with you. But as we go a little bit further in Psalms 5, it tells us that we've been made what? Endure for a night. But what it tells us also, the answer to that would be what? Joy comes when? In the morning time. So it's now it's time for us to be excited in what the God is doing in our lives and what God is bringing us to right now. And so let's be in joyful spirit and what God is going to do in this house and what he's doing in your life and what he's going to continue to do in your life now and forevermore. Continue to have joy in your heart. Continue to let God lead you and guide you as he brings you to a new season in your life. Yeah. 
I want to welcome everybody that's online right now. Continue to worship just for a minute. All the fathers out there, happy Father's Day today. This is your day. We dedicate, we, we honor our fathers in our lives and those that have even moved on, we, we remember. Because without them and, and, and our mothers, but today we, we want to honor them and the guidance that they had over our lives. We thank you, Lord. The living word the word of God. Hallelujah. Would you just join me in prayer right now? Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day, Lord. We thank you for being our bread from heaven, the, the sacrificial lamb of God. Through your obedience, Lord, you set us free. Through your sacrifice of dying on the cross and being buried and rose again that we may have, li have life and that we may have life more abundantly. We can't really fathom what you went through, the pain, the suffering for us, sinful man, Lord, in our evil ways, but we thank you for the justification and the washing of the blood. Father, we thank you for all fathers today that work hard to be that provider, to be that man of God, to be that man in their children's lives and, and, and set a pathway of righteousness. And those that even made mistakes, Lord, that learned and, and tried to, to continue to walk with you, Lord. We dedicate and pray for all our fathers today, that they be led by the spirit of truth, by your spirit, God, not by the world definition of a father is we love our fathers and we ask lord that you bless them in a special way today 
as we honor them today, each and every one, Lord. I know there's a lot going on in this world, a lot going on in different ways from the virus to the injustice that's been revealed. It's always been there. But, Father, we ask this day that we honor our fathers, each and every one of them, and that you shall bless them, Lord. Father, we continue to pray for our nation right now, our communities right now, and those that are in the hospital fighting for their lives right now. Those that are incarcerated, the fathers that, that can't be with their children and, and are, are grieved right now because they're behind bars and they, they have pictures that they look at. Encourage them, Lord. Keep them, Lord. Keep them, Lord, and know that you are their grace, that through your grace that they're forgiven. Through your blood, they're forgiven, no matter what they've done. But, Lord, let them not live a life of guilt or shame. And we just thank you for those fathers everywhere, those that are in the hospital praying and fighting for their lives. Lord, we ask that you heal and restore those that we lift up in our, our families and and friends and those that are even going through bereavement right now because they might have just lost their father in many ways, whether it's a heart attack or COVID, Lord, be with them. This might be someone's first Father's Day without their father. And that's hard for children, especially the daughters. We ask that you be with them right now, Lord. Comfort them in their spirit right now, Father. And Lord, we just give you all the honor. We give you all the glory, and we give you all the praise, Lord. Thank you, our bread of heaven, from heaven, our Lamb of God, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Let's kind of seal that with a praise. Hallelujah. God has been so good to us. He's been so good to us. We can give him some praise right now. I truly thank God for this house and, and as we're moving on and, and Sunday school and the word and, and all the people of this ministry family, uh, please give a virtual hug right now. I miss you. I thank God for each and every one of y'all as we continue to move forward in this life, in this time. You know, we were, we were in, and I'm just going to kind of talk a little bit before we get into the word of God. We were in a, a conference, a virtual conference. It was a very good virtual conference. And, and it talked about how to the, the church, you know, the, the main, main theme in, in some of, the, uh, some of the, the, the talks and discussions, especially with the pastors, was about maintaining the church or establishing the church in this virtual environment. And I would tell you that it, it, it warmed my heart because we – had to get out of our box as pastors and as leaders and how we do church and how the church is. But if you really think about it, and I want you to use your spiritual knowledge or wisdom from God, the church hasn't changed. Nothing in the church. Now, yes, you don't fellowship the way we, we miss that part. We miss the, the social fellowship of the church, eating and the breaking of bread, man, having a good time. But from a spiritual perspective or a spiritual look, the word is still the word. God is still on the throne. The Holy Spirit is still walking with us in our spirit, in our heart. We're still being led by the spirit. We're still, so nothing's changed. And so in that, God gave me a word today to talk about moving from expectations to manifestations. That's the, that's the title of the day. So moving from expectations to manifestation. And so many of us as believers, we, we have visions. We, you know, we, like, we talked about that in the conference, having visions and goals and measures. We have visions. We have a desire in state to an objective in our life, whether it's from a natural or from a spiritual ministry perspective. We have those visions. And we understand faith because we live, but we know that faith is the substance of things hoped for. But the evidence is not seen. So we know that this walk that we walk is by faith. We all got that. We know that, that we can't see faith. The faith is in that action and, and putting belief into the action and, and walking biblically uh, on the promises of God. We know that. We walk by faith. And so we also understand that 
Faith without works is dead. We understand that through the, the beliefs and through the manifestation of work, we can see our faith. We know that if we're asking for something from God, there's some work requirements that we in the physical have to do. We have to continue to have that belief. We have to pray. You know, if we're asking for uh, 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 money or something, we have to prepare ourselves in a certain way to receive. That's the expectations. And so, therefore, our expectations are driven by Christ or should be driven by Christ from looking at our vision and our purpose. But a lot of times our expectations is driven by our own limitations. And so what we're going to talk about today is transforming your expectations in God, in Christ, to the manifestation of that to come to pass. Give you a testimony. My life recently. Our church is expanding, and I'm just going to put it out there right now. We're in a, a, a storehouse right now. We are expanding to a larger facility, part of the vision, part of what God had already laid out two years ago. Thank you for that one hand clap. Thank you. Part, part of what God is right. Now, now, you might say, you know, I got my judges online. I can feel your spirit right now. You're saying, wait a minute. We're in COVID. We got all these things going on. How can you expand your ministry when there's nobody sitting in the chairs. That's what you don't understand. Because whatever God has for you is going to be manifested. No matter what. If you still trust God for And so in preparation, in believing by faith, you don't look at what the circumstance is now. You don't. That's not faith. And so if you're expecting to look at what the circumstance, I guarantee you will fail every time. Because the circumstances will affect your belief and your trust in God. But see, God has taught me something these last couple of days, and this is my testimony. When the vision was laid out, I was good for that. When God gave me the word, I was good for that. But I was not, re- I was expecting, okay? But I was expecting the way I was expecting. And we're going to go somewhere with this. So when the opportunity or the door opened up initially to move from where we're at now to a larger, uh, a times three larger facility, and the way and the reason why we move is, if you want to know online, if you're curious, you know that we're expanding because we're expanding our ministry to team ministry. I'm calling it right now. We're expanding our ministry to nursing ministry. I'm calling it right now. We're expanding our ministry to discipleship ministry. I'm calling it right now. We're expanding our ministry and connection to the community. I'm calling it right now. It's, it's in place. Yeah, I know you deal with your own faith. I know you ain't got it yet. but So in that, in that thing, God had already opened the door. I had the vision. I spoke the vision we spoke the vision here in Rock. We would say it all the time. Yeah, we're moving next door. We're moving next door. Yeah, it's a large facility. We would say it. We'll believe. The expectation was there. But when the door opened up the first time, and the owner of the facility of this whole shopping center asked me, what can I do for you? Can I, can I be honest, church? I wasn't prepared. I had the plan laid out. I could tell you what laid out, but I wasn't prepared to receive the ex- my expectation was there, but I wasn't prepared, prepared to receive the manifestation. Well, why is that? Because my faith was not there yet. Because when he asked me that, I didn't have the answer. So you got to understand something about expectation and the manifestation of that. If you're expecting something from God, you should have the answer when it comes open. The Bible says if you knock on the door, what's going to happen? It's going to open. Ask You ask not, you receive not, right? But when you're knocking on that door, you should know what you already want. Let me tell you, when when you were young and you were poor, well, when we were poor, and you didn't have sugar, what would you do? You go over to the neighbor house, right? You wouldn't go over to the neighbor house and knock on the door, and they open the door, and they say, what do you want? And you're just sitting there, and they look like, what you want? Uh, I don't know. What will happen? That slam the door and think you're crazy. When God opens the door for whatever you believe in, you got to have the faith to know and be ready to receive. Testimony. This is true, bro. It's real. So when the owner asked me, what can I do for you? Because I was in such a defensive posture, 
of to argue and go back, I was not prepared. Because we always have this fear or, and we're ready to fight and argue our point. And so when God opens the door for us, we get, we're in the defensive mode, ready to fight somebody. And when the opportunity comes up, we don't know how to act. Why? Because it's not, it doesn't line up with our natural mind. And so I struggle with that. Getting back in the word, moving to faith. God had to take me again from one level to the next. A couple months later, recently, same opportunity. Same opportunity. What can I do for you, Earl? I believe in what you're doing here. I believe in Enrock. I believe in his ministry. I have what you need. I, I added some things there. But he did ask, no kidding, what can I do for you? Do you think I had a plan laid out? Absolutely. Oh, this is what you could do for us. We, could, we need the key to next door to get in there. We need that. Okay, you got it. It's just that simple. Just that simple. And oh, by the way, you don't have to pay for the next couple months. I'm not going to get all into details. But it's a blessing. That's all I want everybody to know. You have to be ready to receive the expected during this time. Now, I'm going to tell you something. Don't get caught up on what's going on outside. Start keep focused on what God has for you. You are part of this strategic plan. While everybody else in the world is worried about all this, God is just taking stuff and he's moving it over. He's moving over to his church right now. Yeah, we don't have this, but he's preparing us for what? Something. I believe a great revival is already happening. And so would you please turn into your Bibles to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. We'll start off at verse 6. Again, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 6 reads, For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. So here we have Paul talking to the church of Corinth, and he's, he's explaining things in the terms of, of what's in us, the knowledge, what is the light. And so he says, what well, God, the same God that commanded the light to shine out of darkness. Interesting. The, the God that commanded, commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts the same power in our hearts, this light. What light? This light called knowledge. Why? Because the knowledge of the glory of God and Jesus. And so we have this thing in us. We have this light, this power of God in us. And so with God, with what's in us, but let's talk about this vessel that we have. This vessel that we have, verse 7. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels. Stop right there for a minute. So this light, this power that God's given us, and we can make it even more plain. This Holy Spirit, God's present power in us is this treasure in this earthly vessel. But the earthly vessel is not perfected. I'm going somewhere with that. It is corrupted. So why would God's light, which is perfect, his wisdom, which is righteousness, his spirit, which is pure, go into this earthly vessel? Why is that? Keep on reading. That the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. You got to see this. You gotta, you're going to catch it in a minute. So Paul said, but we have this treasure, and that is God's knowledge, his wisdom, all of God in us, not for ourselves, so that his excellence of power, because he brought light out of darkness. You got to understand that. So he, if he has the power to bring light out of darkness, which we know he, uh, he does, he has the power to take this corruptible seed, this sinful flesh, and put so much power in it. And why does he do that? Because if he would have remade us totally from the beginning, if, he if we were perfect, the glory wouldn't have came to him. In other words, if we were born with knowledge of God instead of imparted in us, it would have been glory on us. We would have been the one saying, oh, we're all of this. But God takes all of this power, this power, and he puts it in this earthly vessel. And he takes that. Why? Because it's going to show his glory, 
not ours, because we're in prayer. So now we can do things that we don't think we can do. This is where I'm going. We can expect things that we can't do on our own through the limitations of our own mind and our flesh is why we don't expect things. We don't rely on the power and the treasure that's in us from God. So God's purpose is put, he puts divine power in us, in this jacked up body. I mean, you feel this body pain sometimes. You don't want to get up. It's lazy. It wants to do everything else but serve God. And you wonder, why, why am I struggling so hard to get into the Word? Why am I struggling so hard to pray? Why am I so sleepy when I read the Word? It's this broke up vessel. But see, that thing in you is much more powerful because his word says greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. So in other words, we don't have to succumb to the circumstances, but we need to understand what's in us. So why has he put such a, a, a fantastic, powerful thing of knowledge and light and all that in us to shine? Well, one, it shines his glory through us that people may see his glory. And it also shows us that we can't do it on our own, that it's not about us. But it also shows us that we can do much far greater things in Christ. It's nothing too hard for God. So taking this treasure in us with the expectations that we have reveals God's grace through the manifestation of his glory. Wow, that's a lot you said right there. Let me back that up a little bit. Taking the treasure that's in us. Having this expectation that we have reveals God's grace through us. Because once it's manifested, who gets the glory? Yes. So the power that's in you is so great. The expectations you have is great. But how can we move these expectations with the power of God and manifest them? I'm glad you asked that. So the first question is, are you seriously expecting him to do the miracles that he do? How do you check that? If you're reading the Bible as if it's a historical thing that God moved in the Old Testament, if you're just really just looking at it as a God of old, I would say you're not expecting God to move in your life. The Bible is written as an example. Not histor it's historical, yes, but it's written as an example of what God has done in the past. But it does not limit to what God cannot do for us. In other words, you can read all the, all the things in the acts and the manifestations of miracles. and You can't say, oh, this is the only way God moves. If you do that, you're actually limiting God, a sovereign God. God could do a new thing. Matter of fact, he says it in his word. I'm going to do a what? New thing. Something that's never been done before. What? I'm going to pour my spirit into flesh. All flesh. Never done that before. And then it says, what? Young men will prophesy. Young women, I'm paraphrasing. All these gifts are going to be manifested. Never happened before. So if God is pouring in his spirit into us in this new day, and we have the power of God because we have the baptism of the Holy Spirit, what are we not expecting or why are we not expecting the manifestation? It's because of us. It's because of us. And so we have to be conscious and deliberate in our expectations for it to come out. We have to be expecting. What, what, what do you mean by that? Well, when I was young, was anybody on welfare? You don't want to admit it. What would happen in the beginning of the month, before the month? You were what? Expecting. Matter of fact, you knew when the postman came on the first, everybody got a check. Oh, okay. Y'all don't know that. Okay. Check came once a month on the first. Break it down. So, <laughs> what I'm saying is, just like Christmas. Okay, let's do it this way. When you get ready for Christmas or as a kid, you were expecting something. You were, okay, now let's, let's put this, you couldn't sleep. It was on your mind all the time. And you were waiting for that day. 
See, that's the spirit of expectation. See, when you ask God for something, I'm not saying that it's not, I ain't talking about on your mind worrying. I'm, on, I'm talking about on your mind that it's coming. It's coming. It's coming. When you were in Christmas, you were counting days down. It's December, we got 21 days. It's coming. It's coming. Every day you wear your parents out. That's expectation. If you apply that same vigor, passion, ferventness to whatever you're asking God, because why? Because that toy that you wanted, you already knew and visualized how you were going to play with it. That bike you had, you already visualized where you were going to ride it at. You already had it all in your head so that when it came, you just what? You just acted upon what you already knew. It wasn't that now, now some of us might have got toys that we did not expect or didn't want. And when you got those toys you did not expect and want, you didn't know what you were like, what am I going to do with this? It wasn't expected. But I'm talking about the things that you expect from God. So why am I saying it? What I'm saying is if you really say you're expecting something from God, you should be visualizing how you're going to use it, what it's going to be done for, how you're going to give him glory, how you're going to do this, how you're going to move over here. You should have the details written all in your mind because you're expecting. But if you're just saying, oh, I want a new car. That's too vague. You're not really expecting. You're, you're, it's like, you know, when you talk to people, man, I wish this. That's what you're doing. You're putting, you're just throwing it out there. You didn't really put any thought to it or your faith into it. You didn't drive it down. So when you, when you expect a new car, and I'm just using a car as an example because we all can relate to that. When you own a car, you know, you should know what kind of car you want, what kind of mileage it has. Now, let me tell you, some people just go to dealership just say, I want a car. Guess what? They're going to persuade you to do anything. And see, that's what the devil does. When you don't have a really understanding of your expectation or belief and trust in God, when something comes and presents itself, you just go for it. Because you never really talked about it with God. Oh, it looks like what you want, but you, what you want is so vague that it doesn't matter. So I can, you can go to a car salesman, and you can go in there thinking you want a Corvette, and you can come out with a little Toyota RAV4 because they talked you out of it because your expectations weren't there. But if you really want something from God, if you really want something from God, if you really want, you got to lay that thing out to the Lord. And this, Lord, this is what I'm expecting because now, God's making, God is so good. He's making a way for what you want. Matter of fact, he's going to make it better than what you're even asking for. That's why it takes a little longer sometimes. He's, he's working things out for you. He said, I'm going, to, I'm going to bless my son. I'm going to bless my daughter because they've been so faithful. And they're giving up what they want. They're telling me what they expect. And I'm going to make it line up until I can get the glory. And when it comes, you enjoy it. You value it. It's a testimony. It's powerful. And you're giving God the glory. It's not something that you said, well, I didn't really want that, Lord. I didn't want that, Lord. He knows what you want. But you got to know and you got to expect. Turn into your Bibles to Acts chapter 3, verse 1. Again, Sunday school is always in the sermon. I mean, like deep in a good, good word today. If you missed Sunday school, um, we got it online. Good word by Pastor Rudy. We thank you for that word today. Good word. Amen. Acts chapter 3. We will start at, um, yeah, verse 1, and it reads. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. Verse 2. And a certain man lame from his mother's room was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. So let's, let's lay the story out. So we have Peter and John. They're going up to the, to the synagogue in Jerusalem. Ninth hour being about 3 o'clock in the afternoon. They're going for prayer. So there's a certain man that he, oh, he's, he's been lame his whole life. He's never walked. And I'm going to put a, a spiritual part of this. He, he's never walked. Many of us have never achieved the level of faith that we're at now. Many of us have never believed God 
to the point. Some of us are not even saved. And so here, a certain man laying by his mother's womb, he's carried daily. So daily he is going to the synagogue. Daily we are praying for things for God. I'm going to where it is. Daily we are praying to God in our prayer, asking for something. So he's at this temple called Beautiful. He's never walked. But his daily prayer is limited to the expectations of his disability. In other words, he's only asking for money. He's not asking for healing. He's only asking because he's disabled, but he's not even, he's not even addressing that part because he's never walked before. So if he's never walked before, why should he expect anything more than some daily temporary uh, uh, satisfaction for him to eat? He's limited by his disability, his mind. Saints, I would tell you, we have a lot in common with this, this person. We are limiting ourselves by the disability of our faith. What do you mean? Well, some of us never, never think that God would do the greater things, but we never ask. Some of us limit to what we ask God. So we pray every day consistently and fervently. We're praying, but we're only praying for a, a, a bandage, a bandage of the or a patchwork on the problem. See, we see here his problem is not that he needs money. I mean, he needs money to sustain, but he does not walk. He cannot. He, he lacks the ability to make money. He lacks the ability to be a good steward. He lacks that ability. That's the main issue that what God is looking at. But a lot of times we only pray for the small things because we lack the ability to really see the big picture. We ask for money. But God said, no, I'm going to give you wisdom to make even more money. But we don't see it that way. Lord, I just want to get through this year. God's trying to say, wait a minute. Yeah, we all pray that one, don't we? <laughs> we want to get through this year. Some of y'all praying for a reset. But even in this year, this horrible, I wouldn't say horrible year, but challenging year. I like that word. Do you know, even in a disability of the environment we have today, do you know God can still move in such a great way beyond what you even imagine? Do you know that? Do you believe that? Or are you disabled just like this man, just asking to get by? Lord, I just want to get by. I just want to get, I just want to get by. Every day, he's persistent. He's in front of the synagogue. But here, he's just getting by. So we're, we're limited by our expectations. Because our expectations are based on our spiritual disability. We, don't, we lack faith. To know that this God, this sovereign God that we serve, this sovereign God that we say he's got everything in control. But then we look at the situation. We, we, we allow our own situation to paralyze us in our faith. We allow fear to paralyze us. We allow our past. We talked about chasing shadows. We allow our past to paralyze us. So we cannot we cannot get to where we really need to. We're just asking for handouts from God. Technically, we're begging for handouts from a sovereign God. Think about that for a minute. A God is that is able to do everything more than enough. He said if we have a faith of a what? A mustard seed. That we can move a mountain, we can cast that mountain into. Think about that. That that mountain could be anything you want, debt, whatever, finance, whatever. But what's holding us back from the manifestation of the things that we expect is our own limitations. That's it. It's not God. I'm gonna show you. So, verse three reads: Who seen Peter and John about to go into the temple? Ask and all. So, so he's, he's, he sees Peter and John. They got this eye contact, right? From this point right now, he's looking at Peter and John just like anybody else. 
they possibly they have some money. We do this thing. Well, God, well, you know, God put this person in your life. Well, you know, that person might be able to help me get a job, but I don't know, he might not be able to do. You don't even know that person. That person could be a millionaire. But you don't give, you just look at them just like you look at everybody else. You just ask him whatever you need for that day. Next verse. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, look on us. Okay, now there, here we go. Eye contact. Peter is, he's looking at Peter. Now, now the Holy Spirit's about to take control. So here's the connection that you need. But see, this connection has to happen because your expectations are still limited right now. So what do you need? You need the intervene, intervention of the Holy Spirit to take you beyond your limitations of your faith and to move it to the next level. Why am I saying that? I had to have it. I was not ready to receive the blessing at the time initially when the door first opened. I was not prepared. I was limited to say, oh, Lord. So I'm praying, how are we going to do this, Lord? I was, that's my prayer. How, how are we going to do this, Lord? How are we going to do this? Looking at numbers, looking at all these analytical earthly things, and God's just opening the door wide open. And so I was not ready. So it had to take the Holy Spirit to intervene because my disability of my faith caused me to be restricted. But see, God wants more from us. God, so if we just be sensitive to the Holy Spirit, God wants more from you. He wants more from you. Think about this. The bigger your faith is, the more action is, the more God's going to get the glory. So if God wants the glory from you, why would he not bless you with the expectations? It doesn't make sense. Why would he not do that? Why would he not give you the desires of your heart? Why? You're not operating in fear. You're not operating in the world, but you're only asking for little bitty handouts. Your faith's not there. And so we see here that Peter's fastening his eyes upon him and John, and he says, look on us. It's the Holy Spirit, intervention, verse 5. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Okay. You got my attention, uh, Peter. But his expectations, where is his expectations? To get something. See, see what I'm saying? It, it's so vague, it's raggedy, it's limited. All he's asking for or thinking in his mind, he's not thinking about walking. He never walked before. Why would that be something God would do? But the word says, amen, the word says God would take the unqualified. God would take that which man thinks and, and throws out and what? He would elevate and exalt because he will get the glory. And so here we see his expectations are low. He doesn't want anything big. He just wants something. See, something's easy to get. Something doesn't take faith. Something's really easy. It doesn't work hard. You just could get something. Handouts, welfare checks, something. Something is something. And people say, well, something's better than nothing. Yeah, but you're a child of God. If you weren't, if you weren't operating in faith, I would accept that. If you weren't saved, I would accept that. But you are a child of God. So how could you just want something? Why would you just want something? How is God going to get glory out of something? He doesn't get it. So you have to, you have to, you have to be able to remove your disability in your mind and allow God to get more out of you. Manifesting that expectation. Verse 5 again. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. He looks at them. He gives heed to them. He gives them his attention, but his mind is still saying, oh, they asked for me to look at me. They're going to give me, they're going to give me two pieces of silver maybe today instead of one. I might get five pennies. I might get enough for a cup of coffee at Starbucks today. Something. 
but that's not what it is. And so the beggar is not looking for healing. He's not looking for the big thing because he doesn't have the faith. He's, he's, he's been institutionalized in his faith. He's just, every day he asks for something, and that's where he's been his whole life. And many of us in our own way, spiritually, we've been a certain level in certain areas of our life this whole time. Somebody told us when we were young that we weren't going to be anything. And we're still in our mind thinking we're not going to be anything. It's in our mind. Somebody planted that seed. And that seed is still in us growing because we are fertilizing it. We're fertilizing it, not God. God wants you to, to root that thing up and get rid of it. Cast it out. Cast out that fear, the doubt. You don't have to be qualified in the kingdom of God. God qualifies you. This is what we got to understand that. We got the mindset of, well, we got to have five degrees to do certain things. No, you don't. Why do you think there's people that hasn't been to college, hadn't picked up, they, but they have the knowledge? Because guess what? God uses them for a certain purpose, for his will. God would do that for his children even much more. Verse, next verse. Then Peter said, silver and gold have I none. Silver and gold. God's saying, I'm not going to give you what you're asking me. I'm not going to give you this little bit because you know why? One, you ain't going to do nothing but give yourself glory. You're not going to give me the glory for that. I'm not going to give you what you ask for. What I want you to have is much greater. The door is open. Are you ready to receive God's blessing? Why is that? Because it's not going to take you. All you got to do is obey and believe by faith. I'm going to do it for you and through you. And then people around you will know that you're blessed. That you are highly favored. Mm. You don't have to say it. People will say it for you. You don't have to tell people, I'm highly favored. You don't have to tell, no, you don't have to tell nobody that. People will see, God's blessing will radiate through you. And everything you do will be blessed. Wow. And people will say, man, you are, who are, what church do you go to? That's what they'll ask you. Why is that? Why would they ask? That's a compliment. But what they're saying is whatever's in you, word and everything is rooted, is a blessing. It's powerful. And they want some of that. And so Peter says to him, continue to read verse 6 again. But such as I have, give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. So Peter tells him, I don't, I don't have, and we talked about this in Sunday school, I ain't got no silver and gold. Matter of fact, I'm not going to be your welfare check. Because if, if Peter had that, I don't think he would have gave it to him anyway because he was locked on the Holy Spirit. And so we have to understand that, that God wants greater to get his glory out of us and stop looking at our own spiritual disability. It's not about our own spiritual disability. It's not about our past. It's not about what we don't have. It's not about what education we don't have. It's not about what knowledge. God wants to use you. And so you might ask, well, why me? Because you will give him glory. Because of your faithfulness, your obedience. God's going to give you that wisdom, that direction to bless you. It's not about you. Get yourself out of it. Move out his way. And so Peter says, silver and gold, I have none. But such that I have. Well, what do you have, Peter? Oh. But such that I have. What do you have? What does God have? What does God have? Matter of fact, I should put it this way. What does God do not have? Nothing. He has it all. So if we serve a God that has it all, why are we asking for silver and gold? Why? Well, we should be asking for wisdom. We learned that today. 
Wisdom carries greater. God wants greater. I had to learn that. I had to learn that, that to, to walk this thing out by faith. And if he tells you something, if God had put a word in your heart, if he's, you are, I mean, you know for no for a fact God said it's going to happen. You better stand and walk on that and, and give God glory. Because if he said it's going to happen, ain't no COVID going to stop God. Ain't no riot, no economy, none of that's going to stop our God. It's going to happen. Open your heart to the greater, though. Don't limit God. Don't limit God. And so we see here, again, that Peter says in verse, read verse 6 again. Then Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Unexpected. Do you think he was even ready to receive that? No. Somebody prayed for him. I would almost argue, because he was always in front of you, somebody prayed for him. But in his mindset, it took the Holy Spirit to intervene to get him up to the level that he needed to be. Now, he, do have, he has to do something. Don't get me wrong. When Peter tells him to rise and get up and walk, he has to do something. He has to be obedient, thank you, and he has to believe. That's where we get stuck. See, when somebody's trying to pull us up, we go back to our own little shell like, well, why are you doing this good thing for me? There must be something behind that. You must have an agenda. That's not always the case. God does have people that will bless you and love on you because of who you are in him. Don't fight everything. I mean, use the sermon. I'm telling. Don't 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 get me wrong, but don't fight everything, especially when you're expecting from God. Because you can't you can't expect from God, and you're only looking at this little narrow peephole, and you're waiting for God to come through that little narrow peephole, and God's right behind you, waiting for you to step around and turn around and look. The blessing's right there. It's right in front of you or behind you. But you narrowly look, again, you're, you're limiting God based on your own memory, whatever. You can put anything in there. And so Peter tells him and gives him a command. Peter tells him to do what? Rise up and walk. Next verse. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. Now, you can look at this two ways. You can look at it like he was hesitant to get up. And Peter just, okay. Because God has to do that with us sometimes. God gets us out of our comfort zone in order to bless us. He does. His comfort zone, this guy's comfort zone was the fact that he never walked before. So when Peter gives him the command, he, he's probably hesitant. So Peter takes him, as God does with us. And lifts him up. Jesus lifts us up all the time. Whether it's out of our sin, out of our dis, dis, uh, disbelief, God lifts us up all the time. God pats us on the back sometimes to make because we feel what? We, we need it. The comforter. The Holy Spirit is a comforter. There's times where we're grieving. There's times where we, we, we slip into depression and the Lord sends somebody to what? lift you right back up. But here God is showing us that in your limited expectations, he's given you an open door. Now it's time to manifest. And so he's going to lift you up. He's going to lift you up beyond your own limitations. He's going to lift you up beyond your own fears. He's going to lift you up. But you got to be ready to receive from God. And so next verse. And he leaping up stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. And so we see here that he, he <laughs> I mean, think about this. Now let, let's picture this. He's never walked before. He's probably saw everybody else walk. I don't know if he has siblings. Everybody's walking. But he always had to what? Depend 
on somebody else. Some of us in our lives is like that. We always depend on whether it's a system or something. We've always depended on something, somebody else. Not wrong, spouse, yeah, but our whole life. Never allowing ourselves to achieve the gifts that God has in us. Never achieving what God is wanting to grow us into. Whether it's to bless us in the, in the physical or bless us in spiritual gifts. We've always depended on somebody else. But here we see that now he has his own feeding. He has his own footing. So he leaps up and he stands and he walks. What's the first thing he does? Well, one of the first things. I don't know if it's exactly the first thing. He enters what? The temple. He acknowledges God. See, that's the part of expectations we got to understand. When God blesses you, when God blesses you beyond your own limited expectations and it becomes manifested, first thing you need to do is give him the glory. Matter of fact, give him the glory, period, because you know in your heart, you know in your heart you couldn't do it. You know it had to be divine intervention, a miraculous thing that God gave you that wisdom or that favor or that extra thing that you needed to get to that next level. But again, we can't limit ourselves. And so he walks into the temple praising God. Now, this is why God blesses you. Think about this. This is why God's going to do what he's going to do through you beyond your own expectations. Because the environment around us, even right now, and I had to, I had to think about this. I said, oh, God, is so good. This is why God's blessing them rock. It's not because of us individually. It's not because of me. It's not because of you individually. But what do we do here all the time? We lift the name of Jesus. So despite where we started, uh -huh, despite how long we've been in existence, that doesn't matter to God. God could take us as a group, as a body of believers, and expand to give him glory because everybody around us is going to look and say, how did you do that? What, what, how, who did you, where did you get that capability? Who helped you? And you know what my answer is going to be? God, God, God. There's no book. There's nothing but God. God gets the glory. And so when he goes to the temple, he walks in, he's praising God. Everybody knows who he was or is. Everybody knows that he could not walk. So now this man that could not walk is, it's called a miracle. But it was beyond his expectations. Well, when God takes and manifests what you think beyond your limited expectation, it's called a miracle. Why is it? Because you know the fact you didn't do anything. We live an undeserved life, y'all. We don't deserve any of this. Nothing. And you got to keep that in front of you at all times. Because that keeps you humble. But when God blesses you, you got to take it to the next level and give him all the glory because people around you in verse 9, it, it reads, and I'm almost done. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. So, so all the people saw him blessing the name of Jesus, giving God praise. When your manifestation of your expectations comes to realization, God's going to get the glory, but people around you are going to say, they're going to question. They might even try to cast doubt at you, you know, because they can't believe it. But it's like fire set up in your bones. You should be shouting, giving God praise, and giving God all, all the glory. Don't take nothing for yourself. Don't take nothing for yourself. If people want to give you something, that's on them. Because they're going to need something to probably to, 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 to see, okay, this, the, moon, the moon must have been at, at 95 degrees and it was still solstice. That's why you got blessed. They're going to try to justify some kind of way. But you know, and, and most of the people around you that are believers are going to know that it's God. And so they're going to know that God's hand is on you because the, whatever, they, they're going to know, they're going to be like, man, you ain't no way you could have bought that house. Ain't no way. You don't make that from a natural. Yeah. But the supernatural beyond your own expectation is why you're where you're going to be because of God. 
Verse 10, and I'm closing. And they knew that it was he which sat for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him. They're going to know. Everybody that knows you are going to know that God is blessing you. They're going to know that that was a miracle. They're not going to understand how it happened. You're not going to understand how it happened. It doesn't matter how it happened. But you know it happened. And so what we have to do in my closing, we have to remove the Jericho wall of our expectations. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for that one hand clap. <laughs> remove the Jericho walls of that expectation. What does that mean? Stop limiting what God is doing in your life. Start walking around whatever's holding you back and giving God praise. So we know the story of the wall of Jericho. They went around the wall, but seven times, and then it came down. Give God the praise in everything you do. Know what you're expecting from God. And be ready to receive because when that door opens, you better know what you want for Christmas. When that list, <laughs> you better know what you want from God. If you're in the house, you're standing. If you're online, we're praying. Give me some uh, worship music. Give me some worship music. We all know what's going on. We lifted our situation. This is a time, and, and this has been in my heart for over a week. There's a move of God. There's a move of God. And we as people of God have to get out of our own disability or our own limitations or what we thought church was or what church used to be because it's not the same anymore. God is breaking down a lot of boundaries that caused and restricted the church to move. God's breaking down a lot of hearts. God is doing miracles to show that his glory, or to show that his power is still here, to show that he is still here and that he is moving mightily. And we know the enemy's moving. We know all that. But God is moving mightily because the time, the, the, the time is coming. And so you can almost look at this as, as if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, it's, it's time. And I said this Thursday, if you look at the world right now, and we know what the end times are supposed to look like, what, what, what are you waiting for? You see all the signs. God is trying to tell us something. But as children, he's also trying to tell us, don't limit, don't limit yourself. I'm going to bless you because I'm going to bless you because I'm going to get the glory. It's not about you. It's not about what you can't do. It's not about what you're not doing. It's not about even your, 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 your struggles. God said, my, my blood has covered all that. It's cleansed you. Repent from that. But let's move beyond our own limited and our expectations of what God has with us. One thing I learned from yesterday is to steward, being a pastor, stewarding or managing or getting the body to exercise the gifts that God has in you. God has gifts in everyone online. God has gifts in everyone here. It's time for us to steer those gifts up. But it's also time for us to, to get beyond our own limited expectations of God. And not just saying, God, I want you to do everything, but be more specific, but be big. Think big. And ask God. And don't limit yourself for what you can't do. Don't limit yourself on what you think you can't do. Don't limit yourself. Your, 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 your expectations should be grounded on Jesus or a sovereign God, which is limitless. So therefore, you can think and dream anything you want. And if it's going to bring God glory and believe it, it will be manifested. Be patient, but allow God to use you in a great way. I mean, just, just put you on display with blessings. 
because it's going to draw people back to him. Because we live in a society now that, that has all these, uh, that they're losing their faith. They're losing it. Why are they losing the faith? Because we haven't been exercising our faith the way we're supposed to be as a church. We haven't been exercised. We've been exercising religion. We've been exercised doctrine. But we haven't been exercising our faith. And so if we start exercising our faith, then people will see that the church of God is still real. And then people can see the manifestation of his blessings on your life, on your life, then they know God is real. And if they know God is real, it's going to draw them. They say, if, if I be lifted up, Jesus said, I would draw all men. That's not just a cliche. That's truth. That's the word of God. And so let us allow ourselves to be limitedly used beyond what we think we should be for God. And that he will get the glory. Just remove yourself out of his way and allow him to use you beyond your own fears, beyond your own limitations. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you, Father, for what you're doing right now in our hearts, Lord. Lord, now we ask, Father God, that this word continually, Lord, move on us, Lord, to move ourselves out the way that the expectations that we have are limited. We repent from those many little handouts. And we ask for the big things, Lord, but not for ourselves, Father God, not to, to glorify or edify ourselves, but to glorify you on this earth. Expanding your kingdom, we thank you for being a part. We know, Lord, that we don't deserve anything. We're undeserved. But, Father, we know that through the, pre the treasure that you have in this, this earthly vessel, the treasure that you have put in us, Lord, this power, we like to use it, Lord. We like to use it to your glory. We like to let this light shine within us outward so that this world that is hurting right now, this world that is grieving right now, this world that is contemplating so many things, and many people are asking, where's God? We will show them through what you do through us, the blessings that you lay upon us, the gifts that you have put in us. That's God. And we will show the manifestation of the things that you desire, Lord, in us and through us to give you glory. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord. We just thank you, Lord. Opening our eyes to a greater thing. Expanding our faith to a greater level. Removing the obstacles of doubt. Removing the obstacles of fear. Removing the obstacles of all the things that hindered us in our walk with you. And that our walk should be a walk of faith 24-7. Not when we want to turn it on and turn it off. Lord, we thank you. We give you all the honor. We give you all the glory. And we give you all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you. Did you online? Thank you. I think we.